Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Matthew and I'm here with Peter and Karen Brooks and we're going to go through stories of their walk with God and then particularly focusing on missions to India. So I'm going to start with you, Peter. First of all, share with us how you came to the Lord, a bit of a family background and, and uh, let us know a bit of your story. Okay. Um, I was actually 17 when I gave my heart to the Lord, and it was in a, a room in my sister's home. My sister was 15 years older than me, and her son, seven years younger, at 10 years of age, um, precipitated me giving my heart to the Lord because he asked me why I could not believe in Jesus. He also invited me to... Uh, go into his bedroom one night and listen to him pray. And that was a freaky experience because I realised he was not indoctrinated by his parents and um, he was actually talking to somebody who he believed was there. So I went back into my room and I did what people should really not do to find guidance, but I just flicked open a Bible that my sister conveniently put next to my bed and I started reading from Hebrews chapter 11. I'd actually called out to the Lord and said, well, you know, if you're real, I'd like to know who you are. And I started off with uh, Hebrews 11.1, 1, which says, uh, now faith is being sure of um, uh, what we do not see. Um, and then on verse 6, I read that, um, without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now my sister had told me the gospel story because she'd become a Christian actually three years before I was born and uh, so it was lovely that I became a Christian through her 10 year old son in her home when I was 17. Yeah, so that's basically what happened for me. Um, to put my faith in Christ. What, what was the situation with your parents in regard to the Christian faith? My sister, at 12 years of age, um, gave her heart to the Lord. Um, and she was the first in our family. Then when she was 16, she took mum to see Billy Graham when he first came to New Zealand. And in 1959, my mother gave her heart to the Lord. Now, I was about three years of age at that stage, and I became a Christian when I was 17, and I never knew my mother was a Christian. When I was 17, I was shocked because she told me that she was. Um, and then I went back to my sister, and she affirmed that, yes, mum had become a Christian. Now, that's almost incomprehensible to me, even now in some ways. And possibly it was because um, my father, um, was not at all sympathetic to anything like that and she just um, was a secret disciple quite honestly not going to church not really growing but later on in life um, after all their children had become Christians um, dad actually committed his life to Christ um, it, it was because I was able to invite him along to uh, listen to a, a New Zealand evangelist called Colin Graham. And um, it was subsequent to other people sowing seeds, like even my brother-in-law over years. And just his heart changed, and he did. He accepted the Lord as well. So later on in life, mum and dad um, were in a church community where they enjoyed studying the scriptures, and they were prepared to tell others about the love of Jesus in their lives. Well, we've just heard your husband's story, and now I'd love to hear also about how, you, what influenced you to come to the Lord. Okay, when I was born, my parents were already Christians. I was the oldest of four daughters. I was born in Henderson in Auckland. And I just grew up hearing about Jesus and about how God loved me, how Jesus died on the cross. And I always believed it. I went to church and Sunday school. And then when I was 15, God really 
called me. I started listening to some records, back in the days when records were the only way we could listen to music, by a man called Andre Crouch. And he sang a song, I don't know why Jesus loved me. I don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, but I'm glad, so glad he did. And I remember thinking, do I really care that Jesus sacrificed his life for me, that he died on the cross for my sins? And as over a course of a few weeks, I kept thinking about that question. And at the end of that time, I just gave my life to the Lord and really just thanked him so much for sacrificing his life for me on the cross. Also interested to know then how you both met each other and how God brought you together as a team. Okay, well, as I said, I was born into a Christian family and we went to a church in Henderson. And when Peter was 17, he started coming along to that church. His sister said to him, why don't you try Lincoln Road Bible Chapel? And so that's the church where I was brought up in when I was 16, I was baptised in it, and I was in the youth group. So Peter started coming along, and it wasn't love at first sight, but we gradually started to get to know each other. We started to talk. We realised that we both had a real heart for mission in New Zealand or and or overseas, and yeah, that's how it all started for us. I'd like to get sort of just before we focus on India, sort of uh, sort of like a broad perspective of what, what you've done in, in ministry, a sort of an overview of what you've done in the many mm. years that God's blessed you with to serve him. Right. Well, um, both of us were pretty active in our local church as teenagers. We actually ended up basically running a youth group. Um, I also ran a a boys rally while I was still a student, did a bit of Bible in schools when I was at university as well. Um, Karen was involved in teaching Sunday school and that sort of thing as well and um, working with girls rally, yeah, yeah. So we were involved in youth outreach, teenagers and that. And then um, we, we were an item from when we were teenagers, so we had five years before we got married. Um, and at, a, a young, well, a youngish couple came to New Zealand, Filipinos, to study at the Bible College of New Zealand then. And when they left to return to the Philippines after three years of Bible study, they invited Karen and I, um, who were now engaged, married. married by that stage, if we would like to join them in serving the Lord in um, planting churches, basically, in the Philippines. So that was a call, and then at the same time, a missionary couple working in the Philippines, doing that sort of work, um, two weeks after that, they sent us a letter asking the same question. So we went and talked to the leaders in our church, and they said, well, we've been waiting for this, and they really agreed this was the Lord's call in our life. And so for 17 years, um, we were involved in planting churches in the Philippines, learning Tagalog language and working mainly amongst uh, folk who were poorer, and, uh, um, and, and, but seeing many churches begin, um, actually starting church planting ministry. Our family, we had three children while we were there, so Karen wasn't out and about as much as me, but she was involved in a lot of uh, ministry also. So you mentioned that you had a wonderful heart for missions, and so I'll get you to tell us about how God put that on your heart, and then also a bit of the story about the India perspective of missions. Well, the church that I grew up in, Lincoln Road Bible Chapel, was a church that had sent out many missionary couples or single people overseas. One reason is because we were very close to the Bible College of New Zealand and so students would um, come to the Bible College to study and then go out as missionaries and always at our, well, often at our church services we'd have missionaries speak and that sort of thing. So just really put, um, just let me know that the world was a big place and that God's heart was for everyone in the world, not just 
for people in Henderson, but all New Zealand, but for the world and for everyone, for all different cultures and nations. And then, anyway, we came back from the Philippines in the year 2000. Then for the next, well, over a decade, Peter pastored at Lincoln Road Bible Chapel, actually at our home church. That was an amazing privilege. But then the India thing started way back when I was six. I can hardly remember it, but for two years, Colleen Reddit was a student at Bible College. Back then it was called BTI, Bible Training Institute. And she became very close friends to my parents. And when she left New Zealand for India, I was actually on the wharf with my parents and hundreds of people um, saying goodbye to the people who left, who were leaving New Zealand on the ship. And I remember that she held streamers on the ship and on the um, wharf in Auckland. I remember holding streamers that broke as the ship left, the har out, went out into the harbour. So I'd always had an interest in Colleen from there on in. She would write regularly to our church and they would read out the letters and that sort of thing. And she just believed that the Lord had called her to serve him in India. And she had a real burden for Indian women and girls. And I remember something that happened when I was about 12. Colleen sent a letter home about how she was giving milk powder to people because um, they were really poor and very, very unhealthy. And I remember thinking, that's so funny, why couldn't their parents give them milk powder? You know, I just had no idea how some people in the world just didn't have the blessings that we had in New Zealand. But anyway, when Peter and I came back from the Philippines, I was asked if I would join the international board of CMCT, Christian Missions Charitable Trust, which this lady was the um, founder of in India. And it um, works in relief and development and in telling people that God loves them. And then in 2015, we were at a crossroads in our life. One phase of ministry had ended and we were just asking the Lord what he would have us do. And the couple who were doing what we did, what we're doing now rather, sorry, finished. And, um, and um, we thought, hey, that's something that we could do if, you know, that's what the Lord wants. And so, yeah, here we are, seven years later. So what is your ministry now? What are you actually doing for this mission and for the people of India? As Karen said, um, she got involved with Christian Missions Charitable Trust before I did. But seven years ago, um, I moved out of doing other ministry and um, we took over from where this couple were itinerating around New Zealand basically being CMCT's representatives in New Zealand. Um, already there were about 500 children being sponsored um, by Kiwis through CMCT ministry, through the school, and also hospital ministry. 27 different ministries that CMCT operates amongst the poorest of the poor in Chennai. And um, so there's a big base of people in different churches around New Zealand. Um, people going right back from the days when they were fellow students at Bible College with Colling. Um, and so our job is to update people and report and encourage them um, in their continuing um, prayer and practical support for CMCT. So we're the New Zealand team, you might say, um, that supports CMCT. There's also others who do that in the UK now. And there's an international board of which Karen is involved in that, um, and that meets generally yearly, except for the pandemic, a couple of years, in Chennai, offering um, oversight to the whole ministry in Chennai now, which has about 300 people on staff. So all beginning from Colling, a single 24-year-old who went out to New Zealand, uh, uh, from New Zealand to uh, India, and now there's this amazing Christian witness giving glory to God, seeing people come to Christ through their um, ministries. I mean, this Colleen, Colleen Reddit? Yes. She sounds like a very interesting person. Do you know some 
more of her story and her background and some of her missions experiences and how God has grown this mission mm. from one person to being so effective. Colleen was born in Wanganui and she grew up in a church there, very similar to um, the church that I grew up in. And as a young person, she became a Christian. And then as a teenager, she went to a missionary meeting where she heard about the needs and the millions and millions of people who lived in India, and particularly about the women and the children who, well, the girls in particular, who were very, very poor and who were very disadvantaged and looked down on in life. And she just believed that the Lord was calling her to go out there and help in some way. And she trained as a kindergarten teacher, and then after she had taught for a few years, she went to the Bible College of New Zealand, and then her church and our church sent her out to India. So when she first went there, the first two years were spent in learning Tamil language, and then she started girls' rallies, girls' clubs around the city, and women's Bible studies. And as she started really getting to know the women and the girls, she was just, she was just so burdened for how desperate their lives were really and how difficult and hard. They didn't have their own money, they didn't go to school, they weren't literate. And so that's how she sort of started um, her first ministry, which was teaching some of the girls how to sew and teaching them how to read. And she never expected that she would start this organisation at all. She just thought she was going to share the gospel, tell pe people girls and women in India. But, yeah, God, God grew this organisation, this mission. And she saw a need, she had a vision. In fact, her verse that she, um, she founded CMCT on was, without vision, the people perish. And as she saw needs that she thought CMCT would be able to meet, she responded to them. What would you like to say to churches today to encourage them to be involved in missions? I think it's really important to be ready to listen and um, really to be um, before the Lord and expectant. And I think, um, as Karen mentioned, vision is really important. But where do we get our vision from? It's because we're coming before the Lord and we want a vision that he has. Uh, not inventing things ourselves, not pursuing our own agenda, um, but really being open to what God might be wanting to do in our lives. And uh, what I have noticed with CMCT is that calling, um, having that sort of attitude and expectation, uh, the Lord really used her. And she also um, has been very discerning to see how the Lord has been working in other people's lives. And she's been able to build up a great team of people um, who have a similar vision. Now, that shouldn't just be something that happens in India in a mission context. It should be happening wherever we are in our uh, church communities. Um, together seeking God to give us vision for what we can do together and one of the great things about CMCT is the harmonious relationships between all the staff and that's not by accident that's because people genuinely together want to seek what the Lord wants with their lives in serving him as teams real teams I think a big thing is just is being available to God you know, if we really believe in the gospel, we're not ashamed of the gospel mm. from Romans 1.16 because it's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. If we really believe that, that will change our lives. We make ourselves available to God to use us wherever he's placed us. It might be with our family, our neighbour, our schoolmates, our colleagues, our, yeah... That, that's a big thing for me. If we really believe and understand what the gospel is, then we will want to share it with other people, not just keep it to ourselves. Maybe there's someone 
watching today and they need the vision that God has for them. And that's why I'm going to ask you to pray for whoever's watching, that the Lord will speak to them and touch their heart and give them the vision from God for them. Lord, I pray that whoever might be listening to this video will be touched by you. Uh, certainly we've said things um, about our own life and about the implications of your spirit working in Colling's life and what you do through availability, really. And uh, Lord, I pray that uh, you may just touch somebody through your spirit and that they may want to glorify uh, you, Lord Jesus, um, with their lives just by being open to your direction. And Lord, we know that you don't want to conceal from us your desires in our lives. So um, we pray that uh, that openness to you may result in real purpose and direction. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love for us, for sacrificing your son so we can live with him forever. We're just so grateful. And we thank you that you are working in the world and you work in people's lives. And often we don't know about it, we can't see it, but you know, Lord, whether there's people here listening to this who you're speaking to in a special way. Um, I just really pray that they'll be willing to open themselves to you and obey you in whatever way you would have them do, whether it's to pray or to give or to go or whatever, Lord. I pray that people, anyone that you're speaking to here, Lord, will just completely open themselves to you and surrender themselves to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just being in the beautiful attitude of prayer is a time and an opportunity for God to speak to you. And we just believe that presence and that blessing of the Lord being with you to give you guidance and direction. I also particularly thank you, both Peter and Karen, for sharing with us the missions burden that's on your heart. And God's blessing and favour be with you both. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you.